last week on the Glass Cannon Podcast. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. okay. Okay, we, Having a good time. You're going to be fine. We I've embracing the chaos and the bad roles. Though the dark druid attempted to flee the scene. Where is he? He's fleeing out the window. Yo. Hold on, you're hurt. Yo, you're Gaffin. hurt. I'm fine. Go, give, give chase. He's right at the bottom of the zip line. I'm going to jump on him. <laughs> I'm going to claw his eyes out. The heroes gave chase, and the battle raged on. And fur on the back of her neck is like all up, and she is pissed. 21 to hit. 21 is a hit. Yes! 20 to hit. Hit. Yes! The rebel oak steward's cunning proved a deadly challenge. As you start sliding, no. he cuts the rope. <gasps> You are falling to the forest floor. But the heroes forced the druid to plea for mercy. He looks down, looks down at his wounds, looks over at Buggles, swing there, who's just firing spells up at him, looks around, realizes he has no allies, and says, There's no need for anyone else to die here. Perhaps we can talk. <laughs> the adventure continues. Will Lucky survive? No. to the glass cannon podcast it is the last show of 2023 which is crazy because in years past in shows past we would be recording this much closer <laughs> to new year's eve than we are now but now we're uh, a little more professional we have the uh, the ability to record ahead uh, which is important because there's a lot of a lot of factors here cameras a lot of editing a lot that goes on um so I can't even think that far ahead as to what my resolution uh, would be because I feel like I'll be a completely different person. Check, check in with us in about April. Yeah. And I'll tell you what my resolution is going to be. Do you find that like, obviously people make their resolutions and then, you know, they peter off, you know, you go to the gym on January 2nd, there's a million people there. They're like, all right, calm down, cowgirls. Um, I'd like to say that I think I might have, it's possible. This is a bold statement but it's possible that I have spent more money on gyms I don't go to <laughs> than any human has ever done on the planet. That is <laughs> the business model of every gym. Exactly. Yeah. It, so, so I know tons of people do it. I still think I, I did the most. <laughs> I'd like to imagine you just have like a horrible addiction to signing up for new gyms. Like a new gym pops up in your neighborhood and you're like, oh, I got to I got to try yeah, it. Yeah, I'm like, I got to go. I got to go. And I go a few times and I'm like, this is awful <laughs> every in. minute from the yeah. time you walk through the door is awful. But they lock you in with a contract. So then you try to leave and they're like, ah, you signed ah. up for the six months though. And that's it. Yep. You're paying. You're paying. It's $30 just to sign. You know, let me talk to my manager, see if I can waive that 30. Yeah. Hey, Tom, can I? Tom says I can waive the 30 bucks. He never does. This. I can only do it he today never does though. <laughs> You'd have to sign up for but a year he likes right now. You. And then a year later, after you can't get out of the contract, like, oh yeah, you got to pay the $180 initiation fee. Yeah. The initiation fee. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then what I do is I say, okay, I will pay you to not come here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That exactly is the business model of every day. We should start a gym. Uh, we really should. There's okay. way less work for just income. Oh, okay. Glass cannon gym. I kind of like this idea.
Is it CrossFit? Like, what's the vibe of no. the gym? Uh, I think we'll offer that as a service, okay. but then we'll offer like Medicine yoga. balls are all D20s. So. Yeah. Yes. No, oh, see, this is good. <gasps> you know, this it's is me. how you expand. It isn't more fucking actual place. It's like new territory. It's the gym. glass cannon gym. <laughs> the bottom of this building, when we looked at this space, they yeah. were like, do you want to see the basement? Uh, we're like, sure. And it's, I mean, it's like 14,000 square feet. Yeah, it's like a roller derby. Yeah. Right? <laughs> they were like, two karate studios are thinking about buying this and putting up a wall. We could build build a gym down there glass cannon fitness and yeah there'd be some crossfit but there'd also be some yoga uh kate would be teaching a, a judo class every friday night yep you know what's amazing about you? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's amazing about you please tell me you have, you have, <laughs> before the year ends <laughs> you're like million dollar idea <laughs> cutting edge from 13 years ago idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can't even get people to buy tickets to New York shows. I don't think they're going to sign for <laughs> But you've got the New York Sports Club up the street, which sucks. You've got Planet Fitness, right which years. is cheap, sucks. Uh, if, we had, if we had a new one, I think uh, that that's what the neighborhood needs, a third gym within <laughs> two blocks. Yeah, TTRPG-themed gym, because game stores around the block aren't closing down when all they do is sell games. It'd be right. like part LARPing, part working out. Okay. All right. This is interesting. Interesting. Okay, now we're talking. That, that idea costs you cost can, you money. And, right, right. Like if you can do <laughs> 20 reps, like your attack hits. Yes. And the medicine balls, like you said, are D20. So it's like you got to lift that oh, to Joe, roll well. Why are you gamifying? Can't you just make like the barbells like old timey? You have to make it you competitive. You have to gamify it. If it's not competitive, it. no yeah. one will exercise. I won't go to the gym unless I'm thinking that it is a competition between me and Same. everyone else at the gym. Same. Exactly. The minute you walk in, you know what your level is compared to everyone else that works at that gym. Yeah, it's like yeah. playing yep. who's the hottest on the train. Well, you know what? I think you've succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> is that a game you play with your friends? Is that a game you no, play? No, I play with myself. You get on the train and the car that you're in, you look around, you go, who's the hottest on this train car? And then you think, is it possibly me? <laughs> You know what? I played that game and I never knew I was playing it. Until, uh, until yeah, it's I, I had never judging. defined it before. It's called yeah. judging people by their looks, but it's a fun if game. If the world ended and we were just stuck in this car, who would I procreate with? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I never want it to be me. And it never is. <laughs> Can I tell a quick story? Yeah. Yes. Is it New Year's Eve or gym related? Uh, it is sort of tangentially. Okay. I'll allow it. Uh, also, tangentially, it involves me at the end. Uh, so you know my sister Sing you guys all know my oh, yeah. sister yes. wonderful have you all met Sing? have you guys met Sing I still Sing? haven't met her oh. you guys haven't met Sing you would love Sing oh, I know I would you can endorse Sing Sing's the best Sing's mm -hmm. great so Sing was taking the younger of my nephews out to the playground at the park by her house and he struck up a friendship with this uh, little girl his own age and they really hit it off and they're playing together for like uh, over like a half hour 45 minutes and little girl's there with her father. And so Sing's just sitting off to the side. And my nephew is just like to the father of the little girl, just like, watch me do a cartwheel. And he's like, okay. And he just like keeps doing cartwheels for this very patient man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's just like, oh, that's great. That's, yeah, all right, that's awesome. <laughs> and he's really like hitting it off with this girl and everything. And Sing goes over and talks to him. And it's a uh, Christian Slater. <laughs> 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 what? So, Wait, so she was standing there what? the whole time, didn't realize, and then I think she knew she knew it was Christian Slater, but she was just like kind of standing off, as just like letting you know my nephew just sort of like have, rather you know, Christian. Slater. You kind of have to be a kid to ask Christian Slater to watch you. Know, this is what's cracking like, me up. Yeah. It's just imagining. No one at this table could walk up to Christian Slater and say, "Watch me yeah, do watch a car me do a car wheel." I'm just right. imagining Baby Bennett just like watch me do a car wheel. It's like, yeah, that's really great. What a great car wheel. You know? <laughs> So Sing, so then Sing and Christian Slater start hanging out, and they end up walking, leaving the park together. And they go to the bar. This, they left the kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna drink. They go back to the subway. The subway goes past my sister's apartment, and so they exchange phone numbers. And uh, Christian Slater was just like, "Next time you're at the park, just give me, you know, text me, and like we'll come up, and you know, because the kids get along so well." Yeah. And, but this is the best part of the story. So then Christian Slater leaves. Singh is freaking out. She loves Christian Slater. Of course, you know, the 14 year old girl inside of her is like losing her mind. And she, she tells baby Bennett, she's just like, you know, you, you just met someone very famous. 
And Bennett says, oh, like Uncle Skid? <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. A little bonus this Christmas. Uh, she nice. says, no, 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 not yeah. that famous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she's texting him today. I'll let you guys know like what happens. Oh, my. God. I hope he comes to the park. I, I hope really, he does, too. I hope he comes on the show. I really hope. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so funny because... I was saying, I was saying to saying, I was like, if you literally had a draft of like the t the all the people in the world that my nephew could hit up, uh, strike up a friendship with their kid, Christian Slater would easily be top five. <laughs> <laughs> I love Christian Slater. I yeah. was just watching Name of the Rose like a couple weeks ago. Oh, I've yeah. always like really liked him. He's really cool. Another Star Trek officer, uh -huh. another Starfleet officer. Yep. Dude, you are Name like- Name of the Rose, inspiration for Brother Ramius of- Right? That's a great. I was just watching it. It's a great movie. Yeah, you are two gosh. playground hangs from just like casually showing up. Oh, this is my brother. Yeah, I'll do yeah, No, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm excited for the moment where Bennett is like, are you as famous as my uncle said? <laughs> <laughs> I do like He's the like, idea. Who is the skid? I, I shall fight him. <laughs> I like the idea that baby Bennett is like, I will ask every famous person now, do you know my uncle skid? Yeah. Like assuming that you all know each other. Yeah, right. yeah. You always <laughs> hang out at the, at the famous club. Yeah. At the parties. Yeah, it is funny when you have kids how uh, my wife does this all the time, not me because I'm antisocial, but like you just, if the kids hit it off at a playground, it's like, we should hang out every day now. Because <laughs> yeah, kids, like, you might as well get used to this. <laughs> right, it's and also, but if that, that parent is like a human being who can have a conversation, it's a godsend. Yeah. Yeah, it's I'm like, always worried. I'm like, you know, they're going to try and kidnap you and kill you. <laughs> I say you just have to be careful because well, I think they you, most likely are setting you, you up to be But you would probably trust Christian murdered. Slater, right? Because he's a little yeah. too high profile. Well, this is perfect. It was Christian Slater. Slater. I've never heard of a celebrity committing a crime. She's never... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, if it was Christian Slater, I'd be like, oh, all right, that's You'd fine. You'd probably be more apt to trust Christian Slater. Anyone else just giving out their number and being nice, I assume. What if it was like, a, what wife. if it was a celebrity <laughs> whose on-screen persona is all about being terrifying, but is actually a very nice person? Yeah, yeah. like uh, Mads Mikkelsen. I was literally- yeah. oh, That's a great example. Was, who yeah. was all, apparently like the nicest man. Uh, super, supposedly was super, a, super nice guy. to say that, because if I saw him, it would be very, I would feel very intimidated right off the bat. Oh, yeah. Not only because he's Mads Mikkelsen and I love him, but I would also just be like, well, I can't possibly I find anything in common with this man, but he's a normal guy. I'm sure he goes to the park with his kids. He's a beautiful dancer. He is a very good dancer. Is he, he, is yeah, he? he was, have, you ever, have you watched another round? No. I oh my God. Great I've movie. Seen, I've seen the trailer though, where he's, you know, spinning around. I didn't realize he was a good dancer. Yeah, he was, he was like a professional dancer before he was an actor. Was like, hey, I had no idea. Uh, the, the name that came to mind for me was like Peter Stormark. Can you imagine like encountering him on yeah. the playground and being like, you're kissing it <laughs> off. Like, like, Get away from him. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's, that's a cool story. Uh, that's that a cool. very cool story, though. It, it cannot be described as being even remotely tangential <laughs> New Year's Eve or Jim. It, oh my god, yeah. I happened bet, like really soon. I bet you I bet, he works out. <laughs> I bet Christian Slater yeah. goes he to works out. He yeah. probably works out constantly. You he has to. probably never spent a, a single month's fee on a I bet you he he's had. <laughs> I bet you he's had a New Year's resolution. Yeah. 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 It's true. The first thing when you're introduced to him, you should ask him, even if it happens in like November, ask him what his New Year's <laughs> resolution is. Then, okay, that'll, that'll post-validate the story. You can report back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Be like, settle a bet between my friends and I. What's your New Year's resolution? <laughs> and do you work out? <laughs> We'll cover it when it comes on, inevitably yeah. comes on the show. Right. Settle a bet. Settle a weird bet that my friends and I have. Yeah. Now you have to keep watching until April to find out <laughs> what Christian Slater's New Year's resolution is. Not to mention his fitness goals. We'll be right back after this. Once again, I want to thank our sponsors, Demiplane, Foundry VTT, and Norse Foundry. Come on. For all your random... <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, oh, fuck. He's looking for a drop. <laughs> <laughs> for all your random number generating needs, that's Norse Foundry. <laughs> 
<laughs> and like we'll right. and pause for edit. Yeah. I, but I like to think. I would still think about Christian Slater movies. <laughs> <laughs> it is possible the first draft of Norris Foundry's slogan was "Oh fuck." Oh fuck! Oh, fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. You roll the die. Oh fuck! Yeah, fuck. <laughs> that could fit on a T-shirt more easily than my other. Norris Foundry. Ah fuck! NorrisFoundry.com. Um, very, very exciting combat last week. What a great uh, Christmas episode. Uh, one of my favorite combats we've ever had. Matthew, what did you say before the show? I said I think it is my favorite combat we've ever done. Cinematic. Yeah, uh, yeah I can agree with that. I mean, it wasn't quite as uh, as internally satisfying as the famous Gurion fight. Sure. <laughs> that was probably... You weren't as miserable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were yeah. actually pretty happy. Yeah, I was having a good time. Yeah. But it was, I mean... I thought everyone at any at any given moment I felt everyone could have died. Yep. Yeah. We were the multi-level but still involvedness of mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. That that it's it's less disappointing. It's really disappointing like when you fall out of the combat and you can't get involved. But Zephyr yeah. like was a major player from the ground. Also the twists and turns. Like we thought, okay, you know, we have to chase we have to give chase. Like here's the, how the story is going to go. We give chase, we follow him. But then you falling, like him cutting the rope changed. It was literally yeah. It was literally a high wire act encounter with no net. Yes, you know? we all and were dangling on our from own. the rope, brother yeah. Ramius from the rope. Me on the me you're on going the... around and the bridge falling, setting off that oh, trap. Yeah. And me Doom just style. Yeah. hanging. <laughs> but that was the thing too. Is happening in three dimensions. Yeah. Like there were multiple levels to the it. The random the y -axis. fox. Yeah, the, uh, fox. the yeah, fox. random fox that, that may like, have killed you. Killed fox that uh, Troy made up out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> to kill your character. I was joking. Sneak attack. Yeah, whatever. Rogue fox. The character assassin fox. <laughs> wonderful Christmas episode where I was punished as a player and a character just yeah. over and over For every and choice over. you made yep <laughs> I do like that idea Skid I think that they should have a, uh, a character assassin archetype <laughs> it's called a character <laughs> yeah and you just reskin it as any kind of animal that you feel suits the situation Kitsune character assassin yeah. <laughs> I mean it was it was hilarious because I was like ah oh, the fox bit me I'm low on hit points but then the sneak attack damage yeah. of this fucking fox put me down. And I was pissed. I was so pissed. But you're not pissed now. No, I said, I forgot how pissed I was during the game. I'm sure, <laughs> replay that footage. I literally was sitting here like. <laughs> 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 and I never get like that, but I was so mad. And now that I've opened back up my uh, foundry and I see all the conditions I have, I am once again raging on you the You got re-pissed. It's so awful. I, I mean, pissed myself. The, the, pissed yourself again. I pissed myself again. <laughs> Repissed. I'm re pissed. It basically, I think the map wants you to fight that oak steward that you one shot with your hand crossbow right. yeah. and the fox. And then that encounter, encounter is dealt with. If you're coming from the way that you came and you also fall off the bridge and then it becomes a little crazier because there's this chasm between you and the enemy. Or after you fought those... Uh, those sprites right at the beginning, you go up the stairs and you fight them, but they weren't there. I think you maybe saw the guy, but you didn't see the fox. Anyways, uh, the fox still being out there and waiting. Well, there's, in the the way that I theorize about character death, right? Like we always talked about, like in 1E, it was yeah. like falling would just like kill a character. And that can certainly happen in 2E. In 2E, I, we certainly think uh, persistent damage is a character killer. Like yeah. it can be mm -hmm. designed to just like, there's nothing you can do, completely helpless and die. And another real character killer is opening up another encounter yeah. Yeah. that you're not supposed to yep. while you're already in a fight with one. And that's kind of what happened here is you walked from one encounter into another. And that's yeah. what Bolin wanted to do. Like by pulling it around to there, he's hoping that he still has allies left to help him now that he's lost his Sunflower election. He fought very smart. I got to give him credit. But <laughs> maybe he tried to assassinate the fox. We're in, Troy played on our sympathy for animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're, we're in a bit of a pickle here because you actually could permanently die. Yeah, I didn't realize this until we were talking before the <laughs> session, but I still have to roll my death saving throw. Right. Recovery check. Recovery check. Because there is round, there's like multiple rounds that are still potentially happening. Yes. The fight is not over. You have lit up Bolin to the fact, to the point where he's looking at himself and realizing even though he has the upper hand here, he's outnumbered and one more arrow shot could kill him. And so he wants to parlay. However, Buggles goes next and Buggles is way far away, still dangling from that rope, has no way of reaching you to heal. And then you roll your recovery save. Because you're dying too, you've got to hit DC 12 or higher to recover, but that's not really the problem because now you get a whole other round for Ramius or Talitha or somebody to come help you. The problem is if you roll a natural one or a two, 
that critical failure would bring you to dying four and you would permanently die. And the only reason that makes me sad is I wish that had happened at the end of last episode as opposed to the beginning of this, because then it's a better button. Opening the episode with your death is just... That's the only reason it makes you sad is because it would have been a better button. <laughs> would it have been like a gift or not if a character died on Christmas? Yeah, is that a present for you or is yeah. that... Yeah, no, it's better to... Now you've got a new resolution. Uh, make a new character. Make a new Potentially. character. Well, the, new character, a character. <laughs> the new character is the present. Yeah. Maybe the new character can have the diehard feet. Oh, there you go. Just look on oh, the bright oh, side. Oh, 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 I am wow. going to off air kick your ass. <laughs> wow. And you could too. Turn the mics off. I have something I need to say. <laughs> I mean, I, this is this is nasty. I was doing some rolls. You know? I, I'm sorry. I'm just picturing like we need like a cut of this. Like it's a dramatic like on set Hollywood moment where like I leave the mic. No, the mics are still on, but like the camera's trying to find you, but you're beating them up just off camera. <laughs> and you just hear about like, oh, please stop, please stop. We're, we're wearing our lobby. Of mics and yeah, you just hear like crumble, crumble, crumble. Oh, right. the face. <laughs> I'm trying to get through the hair. Armor. I would never. I would never. <laughs> I would never do the face. It would do the phone book, and then I punch you in the ribs with the phone book, so you can't see the marks on you. It oh, just good idea. bruises your bones. Dark. Yeah. It's really. You That's thought how about you thought this through. Yeah, I just got to close a few tabs. <laughs> <laughs> could have done incognito. I realize. Excuse well, me, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep the Foundry VTT tab open here because we need to uh, we need to deal with this, and we're going to jump right back in. Uh, Bolon has a f essentially given himself up, but he could run. Uh, you know, right now he's, he's got his hands up and he's like, let's talk. Now I will just tell you out the gate. I thought about maybe walking up to you and trying to heal you. I don't have the ability to do so both with the character and with the actions that I have. And your psychology. And my general psychology. <laughs> You're saying uh, Bolon would. I, I, you know, it's something I considered. I was like, would Bolon do that to sort of try and uh, get a, an easier sentence here? And uh, I thought about it. And then I was like, well, let me see if I could even technically do it. And I just don't. I don't have the movement of the actions <clears throat> uh, yes. or the abilities. I'm going to say, just looking over the foundry, I also don't think Brother Ramius can do it in a round. Wait, so wait, what? Even on a failure. He's so far away. Oh, well, yeah, you're on the... Yeah. Yeah. So even on a, I was just, I think I'm going to be just a few feet short. So Talitha we'll should be fine. Talitha's hanging from a John, but has to get up. Yeah, it'll take up. get there, and yeah. then I don't needs, have, oh, I don't have right. battle medicine. Yeah. Need two actions. Yeah, so I need two fine. actions to make the elixir and give it to her. So, so if you climb up, then move, you still won't have. I forgot you were hanging. It's on possible the if you don't recover. I don't remember how you could still die. I don't remember how far up on the the. Bridge I started climbing, but yeah, I don't know. I, maybe I would, Bolan could do it in the next round. In my you head, right. you were one action away from climbing up, but that's the action. Yeah, you said you were right at the edge. You could like so, yeah, yeah. so then I can't heal her in this in this turn. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so you may this is bad. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple a lot of different ways you could die. I, do I go in the initiative? Let me look at the initiative tracker. I'm, None I'm, of you can fly, huh? You guys really <laughs> um, let me check my character sheet. Level one. Let me check my sheet. one feet I uh, get at level one. No. No. Oh. You didn't take fly? It's weird. <laughs> you didn't take the fly feet? I guess I didn't. Um, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, because it's going to be. All right, there's Talitha. There's Lucky. Zephyr, Buggles, and Ramius are so far away. I mean, this is. This is brutal. Ramius is in a different building complex <laughs> that currently has no attachment to any other building complex. Yeah, that's true. Oh, right. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, he has a different congressman. There are windows. <laughs> there are windows, Brother Ramius. I know. So my calculation to the window is not enough. Okay. To, to get the heel off this round. So, yeah, you got to... Not you have to pass the recovery. Not I mean, roll a one or a two. We, talk, we talked a little bit about the math ahead of time. It's a... You get a ninety percent chance of not dying this turn, right? Yeah, and then it's, and it's a forty-five percent <laughs> chance of stabilizing. Could you, Joe, run up to a closer window, lean out, and cast? The further away the window is, uh, I, I she has to be within thirty feet. So okay. I need to be at that window that's like right across. Okay. Yeah, the bed, one of the no or the uh, yeah. Let me ask you this question, Troy. Uh huh. Are bottle caps transferable? You know, I looked it up, and they aren't. Let me ask you this question, Troy. Can you turn a bottle cap in for, say, 10 feet of movement? <laughs> yeah. That is a real nice. good use of a bottle cap. That's kind of interesting. You know, I had this thought the other day that, like, uh, if everyone... If everyone turned in their bottle caps, it's a deus ex machina. Um, but it's a three bottle cap minimum. And then I was like, no, that's stupid. Just let him die. Uh, all right, so let's just see how this plays out. I think you're... 
I, coming in, driving into the city today, I was like, ah, oh, Lucky's fine. And over the, the time from when I walked into the studio to just this moment, I kind of think you're going to die. Yeah. I'm going to cry. I know, I know. Um, There's a 90% chance of not it. dying. You I could know. be, you could play bowl on. He seems like a pretty cool guy. What? <laughs> That's my consolation. And yes. he's a higher level. <laughs> Isn't he also going to be somewhat occupied in the criminal justice system? That's true, but she could role play him as like uh, maybe he's hurt. You know when you get work, nervous. Work release. You know when you get work nervous. Release. Mind control. And you start you start rolling Mind your die control. out of like a nervous thing, like you're kind of just like oh, just yeah. see. I Never was doing do that. that. I was doing that before. Oh my god, I couldn't have had worse rolls in my life. I roll really well normally. I'm like a good got good die luck. I was rolling a two, a six, a two. I was like, all right, just need to stop rolling. That's Norse foundry. For all your random numbers generated. <laughs> I was going to say, this, was, but I'm this nervous. was a problem last episode, too. You were, you, 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 you were rolling really badly. The more nervous I get, the worse I start to roll. It's something that my shaky hands, I don't know what it is. When they I'm rolling well, fear. I they know. Can, they can, that's <laughs> one of the nice new features of the Norse Foundry gemstone sets. They can smell my they fear. They can smell fear. <laughs> you had so many opportunities, though. I mean, you had uh, a chance when you were toe-to-toe -to -toe and you missed on those attacks. I, yeah. That's brutal. And like, honestly, if Zephyr hadn't had hit Bolon with two arrows, Bolon comes up and shillelays you. Yep. Like, oh, so, wow. I mean, it just seems like it's now up to fate yeah. because everything else was against you. So Bolon is gonna stand there and be like, there's no, no reason for any more of us to die here. Let's, let's talk. Let's talk it out. And last question. Yeah. You don't have any potions or elixirs on you that Bolon could administer. Oh boy. I, no, I don't think so. I feel so. like all I'll the ones that we looted were used. Yeah, I used mine, you used yours. Yeah, I have them marked as all used. Yeah. I have a dose of shiver. Just get her high. Yeah, I can. This is gonna make it. Like so take your mind off the things. poppy. I'm checking my notes. Uh, my last episode notes. We fight Bolon. I go down twice. Once by a fox. Stupid fox. <laughs> <laughs> was my last note. Still the last email you sent to yourself. <laughs> it's Buggles' turn. Buggles. Uh, you know, I think you. I can't remember exactly where you were, but I feel like you're one climb action away from being in the room. Yeah. No, I think because I'm at the very bottom of the rope. Because you went down there. To, yeah. Okay. So and and I can't really climb. Mm. Like I was able to get down the rope, okay, but I'm gonna have a real hard someone, time getting up it. Someone pull the rope up. Help! Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, help! Please! She's in trouble. Help! And he's. I'm. Can I? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to like to climb the rope. Uh, yeah. Going down. I wasn't letting you making you roll any checks. I feel like it's a lot easier to go down. It's still difficult. Yeah. But I didn't want to, you guys were already hamstrung. But easier. Going up is a different story. Yeah. All right. Let me, I'm going to try to climb the rope. Okay. I'm, I'm now terrified for both. Uh, yeah. Uh, eight. Eight. Um, just bringing up the old climb skill here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. Says you can go five feet with a, uh, with a five. So, uh, yeah, I think you can climb up five feet. With a DC five, With it's DC only a five. critical fail. It looks like if you to fall. Yeah, speed. So if you have a speed of what, twenty to thirty-five? Uh, uh, twenty-five feet. But what's the DC? The GM determines the DC based on the nature of the incline and environmental circumstances. It is a ladder. A rope. A rope ladder, ish. No, it, it was a bridge. It's just a rope. It's just a rope. It's yeah. I feel like rope DC wants defined. to be ten. At least I think a base ten. So yeah, you just like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so makes Buggles, sense. Buggles is, is stuck down there. Um, yeah, it's, it's, there is one. I'm fine. I think he's fine. He doesn't correctly fail. Yeah, no, no. And even if he did, it's fine. also a single action. So you can just keep trying. Yeah, I'll. Oh, sure. Yeah. Try right. again. Oh, uh, 18. 18. All right. So, um, you're able yeah. to move up, uh, 10, yeah. 10 feet. One more. Uh, 14. Uh, yeah, look no. at you go. Uh, 20 feet up the road. Uh, excuse me. I said t uh, 10 feet. That wasn't five a feet, critical five success. Feet. So you move a, ten, a total, ten total of 10. Feet. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Buggles just like, uh, hand over hand. Hopefully he doesn't crit critically fail. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. Apologize. Uh, I, I, I don't think, I, only if I rolled a natural one would I critically fail. Right. If I've set the DC at 10, only a natural one. So That's cool. Um, okay. God. Well, Lucky, 
A couple things are going to happen. Oh. You roll a 12 or higher, you're fine. You're you fine, roll, and all this goes away. You roll a 3 to 11, you go to dying 3. You roll a 1 or a 2, you die. <laughs> I'm s- my hands are like so sweaty. So are mine. My, my hands, hands are sweaty. sweaty. To be fair, my hands are always sweaty. <laughs> They're very hairy. <laughs> They're very hairy. They're very hairy. <laughs> sweaty. My heart is in my throat. Okay, here I go. Oh no! I just I could see it. No! No! What did you no! roll? No! No! It's a one. Oh, oh my god! No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the saddest drop because oh, no. it didn't even get through. The remote. <laughs> it didn't even get through. <laughs> Try again. Oh my, oh my god. god. <laughs> no, there still has to be a way. I'm no, so no, sad. no. <laughs> I'm crying. We can fix this. We can fix this. <laughs> We need to start thinking about arrangements. Oh. <laughs> Skin's already moved on to a different, <laughs> uh, different <laughs> stage of grieving. <laughs> who's, who's gonna pay for the funeral? <laughs> yeah, like we, we haven't have, thought about a headstone. We have to plot. Did she say anything about her wishes? Did she have any money? When you're dying, Next at the of s- Ken, start of each. Do you know any other fighters? God, <laughs> she don't. <laughs> did she have any friends? <laughs> yeah. right. or she- siblings, perhaps a cousin with a similar name but spelt different. I can't wait to skin this fucking fox. Uh, <laughs> no, oh, the the fox killed skin this corpse. The from fox it, killed this. Yeet it into the sun. Maybe it was a rabbit fox. Uh, so I have rabies and I'm dead. So well, don't uh, touch the corpse. I mean, honestly, she has rabies. <laughs> it's the best time to have rabies when you're dead. Yeah, I guess you're right. It's uh, it's episode 15, and that's our first character death. I'm looking right now recovery checks. When you're dying at the start of each of your turns, you must attempt a flat check with a DC equal to 10 plus your current dying value to see if you get better or worse. This is called a recovery check. Blah 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 blah. Critical failure. Your dying value increases by two. There were 20 options. Two of them would kill you, and you rolled a one. Okay, but (laughs) I see what you're saying. (laughs) Um, I hear you. (laughs) We have a cleric who has, I assume, connections to other clerics. Could there be a resurrection? Everyone died in the fire. Joey. Died in the fire. <laughs> With a dead look in your eye. Uh, oh my God. Everyone I know died in the fire. Oh, man. You're the only friends I have. You're the only cleric left on Earth. Um, well. So, I mean, in this moment, Bolon gives himself up, but the fox sneak attack from the brush Kills Lucky. I cannot. Be- I cannot believe. Jeez. I cannot believe that I rolled a one. I can't believe I wasn't the one to die first. I have not accepted this yet. You're still in the Personally. denial phase. Yeah, I'm like no, no. I'm in the denial phase. This isn't. This isn't fucking happening. I'm sweating. It is the fox's turn. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> So rude. What What's it gonna do? Eat my corpse? <laughs> it is hungry. <laughs> oh, it has the trait hungry. Just comes and chews on your wounds. Um, oh. The fox does not come out. Go to the top of what would be round nine. I mean, at this point, now with no one about to die, I can take you out of initiative. Um, Brother Ramius was going to, you know, move quickly toward the window. Yeah, so walk me through this cinematic. He moves as quickly as he can toward the uh, window that looks out to the east, and he just sees Lucky's body. And when you do that, like, Zephyr's down below, she's got, she's like, I've I've got Bolon in my sights. You go get her. I I got this guy. You you go get her. Yeah, you guys don't even know I'm dead. He's looking across at the the body, and... uh, uh, oh, he's just going to cast heal. I don't see why he wouldn't. So he's going to reach out through the window. I'd open the window. Keep a saver. 
and oh yeah, perfect. <laughs> I needed you to open the window. Uh, and he's going to reach out. I think he's really, I, I don't know for sure. Let's see. I think he's 30 feet across. I mean, 25 feet across this gap. And he reaches across and uses his last heal of the day. Any chance, Troy? Reach out, cast heal. When this happens, does light come out of your hands? Mm-hmm. Is it, it like sort of comes like from the god, flows light just out of your hands. You see it float through the uh, tree canopy, land on her body. You've cast this spell before, probably before you even met these people. You probably remember the day you learned how to use these magics. And there's no movement. You see her like black fur, just like, you know, in the wind. Keep up, please, please. Nothing. And Talitha will like, like, gets up to the top and sees Lucky's body and rushes to her and is like, Lucky, 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 please. And she like turns her over and just like sees the, the blood stained fur, the blood matted fur and the fox bite. And she's like, no, no. And she looks up at Bolon. Zephyr at this point is like, guys, um, is everything all right up there? What's I'm- happening? Talitha, is there anything you can do? Is there anything? I mean, he is so hopeless with this head- because the magic of the keeper did nothing. The body didn't even budge. Talitha just puts her head in her hands and just sits there. You brought this on yourselves? You had no business coming here. Her blood is on your hands, not mine. I need to get over there. Talitha, I'll, I'll be there in a moment. And uh, he's gonna try to get over there. Um, Perhaps you're right. He's not even listening to Bolan, he's just so focused on Lucky. Perhaps this blood is on our hands. But what have you to say? Do you surrender? I do. My job here is done. Your weapons, over the edge. Fine. Takes his staff, drops it. As it falls out of his hands, it turns back into a regular staff. Lands. Zephyr, you see it land on the forest floor. You may have slowed our progress, but the Obnubulate Curse will return, and this time it will be far more powerful. All will fall. Not just elves, not just cat folk, all. The Great Reset is coming so that nature can return to its throne. They have seen it. Humankind has has become out of balance with the rest of the natural world. It is our responsibility to cull the herd. Look at you. Look at what you've done here. You think that is the only body? Look at that one, he points at the other oak steward. And how many other countless lives have you stolen from this place? Far more than I have. This is why you deserve to go. Tell the fox, tell the fox to go. Back to the wild. He'll, he's free. Fading moss, you have served your purpose. And they thank you for it. Run free. I am sorry for your loss. You would just hear like, uh, Talitha's gonna stand, and can I go uh, pat him down, make sure he doesn't have any other daggers or weapons on him? He had a Walther PPK. <laughs> Talk Talk to to this belt. Belt. Like, what is nice what try. sorcery is this? <laughs> don't worry about that. Uh, and like, Talitha's up on the the like on the bridge at this point, alone with him. Yeah, just bridge. Zephyr's on her way up to come up behind Bolan. If when she saw him drop his staff, she starts running up there. Um, I can't move my character. You could uh, absolutely. Um, like Yoda style um, Buggles if you want. Well, Buggles oh. is like, I'm pulling Buggles You're up pulling in Buggles the window up. now, because okay. he he's almost all the way up. So Brother Ramius went down to the bridge, saw that it was broken down, the bridge to the south, came back up, and now he's, I, I bet she's helping Buggles in the window. Come in, come in, something's happened to Lucky. Do you believe in justice? Hold on. Oh yes, and it will be served. Yes. On that, we agree. And Talitha is going to run him through with her rapier. <gasps> oh, yeah. Yeah. Tobias a strategy. Run him through. <sighs> 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 <sighs>
You will deserve everything coming to you. They have seen it, and they are watching. Just buckles to the ground, spitting up blood. She very coolly withdraws the rapier. Oh. Just wipes it off on his, his garments. <laughs> Zephyr was like behind Bolon while you did that, and now maybe like has a clear path to see Lucky on the ground there at the other end of the bridge and just kind of runs past you up to Lucky. This is probably when she actually finds out uh, what's going on and just, yeah, kneels down and is like, no, no this wasn't supposed to happen this way way and looking around just like well no <laughs> like nothing you can do just nothing you can do yeah buggles too he's right behind he's like no 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 i could feel she was hurt like no and he he's like tears streaming from his eyes he runs up and just like kneeling next to her just kind of like stroking her fur crying kanibo i know you are watching <laughs> please Please save me, I am not done serving you. Talitha takes the rapier and stabs him again. Oh, jeez. Bottle cap. (laughs) (laughs) Bot. So we're saying we're all over there now? Yeah, you're all over there now. God. What do, what do, what do we do? what can we do? And Brother Ramius kneels down again, and now he's, you know, still thinking about the struggles that he's had with the healing magics and and even the struggles that he's already had with Lucky, just just uh, healing her with mundane means as well uh, when she was burned badly and stuff. And he's he's just saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he's, he's removing parts of her garments to look for wounds and is trying to patch her up wherever he can. Uh, performing CPR, pumping her heart, you know, just doing all the things that he can try and and just sweating and in, clearly in grief, uh, trying to bring her back. But yeah, when you seems to be working. When you take off like her her copper you have to try. plates and stuff, you see on her stomach she has her Gatewalker's mark, and it's almost like a big brand, um, and fur is missing, and you just see she has you know multiple puncture wounds from fighting Bolon, and the fox bite was like nothing but it it's the thing that put her down and you see that is like kind of on her uh her thigh and maybe you realize like it it was her femoral artery or something like it was just like a crucial hit yeah the loss and buggles too he's like he's trying to like he's sitting there crying and he's trying to summon siaka ak like this his other aspect so that he can do some healing but it won't come just like oh, he's just like hitting his little head. He's just like, ah, come on, come on. She's gone. Talitha is just still standing over the dead body of Bolon, bloody rapier hanging down from her head. Oh, his eyes are open, staring at Curse this place. Perhaps. Zephyr just like slowly backs away, like flat face, stands up, turns around, and just like walks away towards Talitha and Bolon, and just. Loots Bolon. <laughs> <laughs> Loot Bolon. Like aggressively. Body. <laughs> aggressively looted. Uh, and yes. you, um, you, you remember in a British accent that maybe, <laughs> Lucky didn't have a British accent, but you remember a British accent and Lucky saying, Bring my body back. Bring my body back. I'm doing a Harry Potter reference. Um, oh no, it's so oh, sad. Right. <laughs> but may, yeah, maybe like a very sad remembrance of Lucky just saying that she wanted to be uh, cremated or something, you know, like some wish of hers that you remember. They talked about one time late at night around the- I remember that and say that to, off this, like, the side of my mouth to to you. Just, sh- we, need, we need to bring her potty back. Um, yes. Yeah. We must that. And after I loot Bolan, I, I kick his body over the edge of the. <laughs> don't we have to take him back? Do we? We if, killed him. <laughs> I think we do need to bring some proof of. All right, I don't. Yeah. I don't kick his body over. Well, the you could. We'll say he fell. Pick it up. Um, I'll tell you what he had. He had a dagger, a uh, hide armor, his leaf mask, and the staff, which you, uh, which he threw to the ground. Um, if you want to go retrieve it, as a plus one staff. Oh, all right. He did not have any healing potions or the ability to save your friend. Um, 
Yes. What was the name he mentioned when he called out when he, I, right before I stabbed him again? Uh, Kanipo. Kanipo? Kanipo. Save me. There's more that I can do. Can I roll a knowledge check on that name? Mm-hmm. Is it a, a god? Is it a... Lo- <sighs> like, what would I, what it, you tell what? me what you want to roll because you've never heard it. I mean, I'll just run through my knowledge. I'll start with Arcana. Yeah. Uh, natural 19 for 26. All right, so that's as high as you're going to get. It's not a name that you're familiar with at all. all right. Even like the derivation, like, oh, that's Knipo. That sounds like a River Kingdom's name. You don't know it. Um, we must finish clearing the fortress. Assure ourselves there are no more rebel oak stewards left, and then we will, will bring Bolan's body and the body of Lucky back to Seven Arches. Allow me a moment, please. And he just goes into the folds of his robe and he draws out this small book. Uh, It's just a tiny prayer book. And he starts to perform a hastened version of a last rites, essentially. And it's a small prayer and ritual that uh, the keeper takes the spirit and grants it access to nirvana where it will once again you know reunite with all of us when we all raise through that enlightenment to nirvana so he's confident in his belief that he will see lucky again uh and he's sort of paving that way with this small ritual it only takes about five minutes um and it's uh you know some oils and stuff like that like on the forehead that kind of thing and then closes the book and says let's clear it out um medicine checks we should all heal we're all I'm, I'm pretty hurt are you assume those of you who fell 30 fell 30 feet are also hurt I am wounded I believe yeah wounded too uh okay then brother Ramius will begin to attempt treating wounds uh, up on this bridge um yeah with just tears in his eyes Okay, uh, who's hurt? Uh, um, I healed lucky. you. I healed. Yeah, uh, my hit points are fine, <laughs> lucky. pretty much. Lucky's all banged up. Who's hurt? <laughs> lucky. Lucky's all banged up. <laughs> uh, Talitha Tal- gets herself. <laughs> okay, and how are you doing? I'm only two hit points down. Otherwise, I'm wounded too. Okay, and then what about Buggles? I actually have a bunch of temporary HP on top of being completely healed. So <laughs> okay, then he's just going to take a few minutes and try to help uh, Zephyr. Uh, success. Um, and so you only needed two, right? Yep. So you'd absolutely get that. So you're fine. And then he will work on himself and he succeeds uh, as well on himself. Uh, so that's good. And oh, 13 points of healing to himself. So yeah, he's Buggles, back up to full. Buggles wants to help with us too, but he can't because I can, I can, he can only do the restore the mind when his psyche is unleashed, when Siaka Ak is, emerges, but that can only happen in an encounter. Mm. So he's like, he's, trying to force it out and it just it won't it won't come she's gone lucky I'm lucky she's gone comma she's gone comma <laughs> lucky lucky I mean lucky, lucky. I, she's gone. gone buggles I can't I can't believe it Talitha you're, you're right we must clear the fort let's make sure no one else is here and then we can decide what to do next uh, can we have we seen everywhere in the fort at this stage? To your knowledge, yes. Um, obviously, when you walked into that first room that Bolan was in, um, you immediately went into an encounter, so you haven't really searched oh, yeah. that room. You can search that room. Um, and then the water tower room, you were kind of in and out of, but you did you did search that. Um, so if you look at that uh, office, must have been like the office of the the head of the gnomes, the one that you spoke with, Parva. Mm-hmm. Um, it's now been repurposed. There's that uh, sleeping bag or sleeping mat on the not sleeping bag, but sleeping mat on the floor uh, where Bolan had taken it over. You look around and you do find some interesting things. You find in one of the cabinets um, three lesser healing potions. <laughs> <laughs> Those really would have come you in handy son of a, bitch. a few moments ago. Is that ago. true or is that, is that a bit? Look at her. No, face. It's, it's true. <laughs> Um, Draw a bath, pour them in, place my body in. <laughs> there are three lesser healing potions. I don't think the action economy would have been enough for Brother Ramis to get up there, search, find it, <laughs> run to the window, t- 
toss it directly into her mouth. <laughs> 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 into her <laughs> mouth. It shatters <laughs> on her lips. <laughs> one drop, one drop dribbles in. Uh, Stable. And you also find a uh, journal made out of like uh, parchment and leaf. It's got like a leaf covering that's been um, yes, please tempered. Yeah. Uh, you start looking through that, and it is the personal journal of one Bolan Nagasa. Aha. Mm. Um, start reading. I imagine you start from the back. It's not like, puberty is tough. You know? <laughs> 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 what do I do when that thing happens in my girl, pants? This girl I like um, in my class. <laughs> <laughs> so you skip towards the back, and you see uh, you know, certain entries like... Uh, my powers are growing by the day. The gate has gifted me in a way that I feel like I've already des- always deserved. Um, so you see that, and then the entries. Um, Is there an entry that describes what he saw in the gate? No. You look quickly. Anything describing what he saw? No. Only that he remembers eagerly jumping towards it when the gates came alive. And we don't remember what we saw you ourselves well, we were, some of you do yeah well just what we saw but not what happened in the three yeah. months or whatever the that missing we were gone. time you, we you probably all remember what you saw or maybe you've blacked that out but once you walked through i, I meant like more like what we experienced yeah no no one remembers yeah that. and does he say in the journal that he does not remember what he experienced yeah he doesn't remember either okay so that was an important detail i was asking that of the Halfling. I was like, did he say he remembers what he saw? No, he does remember them a moment before. He remembers the gate opening and eagerly jumping through. Didn't give it a second thought. Obviously, he saw something that he desired, as all of you did as well. Then you see um, an entry describing uh, a visit that he received in the night from a terrifying fae named Kanipo the Slim. He said he was so afraid at first, but how quickly that fear turned to calm. He's always loved the Fae and always felt closer to them than other people. And he was desperate for an ally and found that ally in Kanipo. And Kanipo wanted him to do certain things. First of all, to steal the key, which he did, and then gave that key to Kanipo. Sorry, where did he meet Kanipo? Uh, the Fae came to him. In Seven Arches? It doesn't say. It says, I was visited the other night by a terrible Fae named Kanipo the Slim. So he, oh wait, he doesn't even have the key. He, he researched his took body. the key and he gave it to Kanipo. You read on. And it appears that Kanipo is responsible for the Obnubulate Curse. The original Obnubulate Curse. Like for curse. thousands of years? That's what he says, or at least he's taken credit for that. And the key is vital to ensuring that it will not only return, but destroy all humankind. <laughs> I've got good news, and I've got bad news. As you read that, you all level up. Yeah, okay. That's the bad news? What's, Wait, bad news? what's the well, good news? not all of us. That's the good news. Yeah, not- the bad news is lucky. You don't, Too soon. You don't level up. <laughs> Too soon. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> <laughs> So, a lot of information, and you are imbued with new powers. So, what's the good news? Some of you. <laughs> good news is, we need to chat after this 
after the show. I've, I've found a new actress. Why do I feel like... <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm being reprimanded for you killing my character? You're like, uh, because Sid, that's, we got to talk after the show. That's how it. That's how he works. As uh, someone who's who's uh, had a lot of characters draw, die at Troy's hand, yeah, he rep, he makes it seem like your fault. I've, I've changed my anger. I wanted to beat you up off air. Now I'd like to beat you up. Back on me. <laughs> Back on me. I, uh, I was workshopping this show idea for a while where if your character died, you were placed on the show. Honestly. <laughs> Maybe this is the show to do it. I think you should do that. <laughs> New pitch, though. A show where we do like a you know, OG dungeon crawl, but that's what it is because you're going to die like immediately. And you just have like a rotating like musical <laughs> chairs. Like it's like, up, and then you just get up, you go get a coffee, and then eventually five minutes, you know, you come back, up, I'm back in the I'm game. Back in. Yeah. Back in. New We're character. GM. Can we Bye, can, can. Do you have to rotate out if one of your characters says? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> every, every, every boss kill. Every encounter. is <laughs> a new GM. Um, <laughs> every well, boss kill right away. <laughs> <laughs> the real question is, uh, I would presume Sydney's going to return to the game, right? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so, presuming so that, awkward. presuming that with a new character, this live, huh? um, <laughs> you won't need that right now. Hello, oh my, I'm also, my ride's here. <laughs> I'm also presuming new character level one. Yeah, that's one thing we hadn't talked about. Is wait, 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 okay. You, you need to worst. You need to XP your way back to no. uh, catch up with the party. We no. never talked. I didn't no. sign anything. We, we never it. talked about it. It's this. part of Troy's we, new impossible. We rule. die at level seven, <laughs> and you bring in a level one character. It's gonna no be really hero dicey. points. You'll level up super and you fast, start though. over when you die. You'll be like level three after one encounter. If you we've talked about it, we collectively disavow Joe and reject that. That would be amazing. No, but we'll we'll think of something for you to do. Yeah. Um. We'll find I, something. I can always ha ha need some help adding back here. Uh, <laughs> but in the meantime, you did kill Bolan. Uh, he deserved it, one, one would assume here. Uh, Lethal thought so. Your job was to bring him back alive, but that didn't happen. And I'm sure they understood that uh, things could get hairy, and they did. Your lives were at stake. And in fact, one of you perished because of Bolan. Not to mention what Bolan did to these gnomes not even uh, seemingly being truthful with his cronies. Corumona certainly didn't think the gnomes were dead, and if she did, she was a good uh, liar. They were displaced, is what she said. Displaced from life. So as you search his room, you find some potions that would have come in handy, obviously, um, but you also find his personal journal where he recounts remembering jumping through those gates, coming back with new powers, feeling like he was chosen, being visited by a fae named Kanipo the Slim. And Kanipo explaining to him, we can be allies, just get me this key. I'm responsible for the Obnubula curse, and I want to bring it Does he back. say anywhere in the journal why Kanipo chose him? No, the only thing you see is that like the Thin Lands, the Thin Lands, I want to visit the Thin Lands, hmm. see them in their own domain. But there's no um, sort of motive other than, uh, you know, the same thing that they think of Bolon, anarchy. But they're Fey. Kanipo the Slim appears to be Fey. Kanipo the Slim from the Thin Lands. I Have think we heard I of the Thin Lands? Some sort of flatland. <laughs> I keep thinking of, uh, makes me think of Slenderman. Ooh. Ugh. That's what I got this. I got Coming in the night. Yeah. You know. Do, yeah. Do we know what the Thin, yeah. thin Have we lands heard of that? Are? Uh, so, uh, Brother Ramius is extremely well read. I haven't rolled on any of this yet. So, mm -hmm. is this ringing any bells, any legends of uh, the Thin Lands or uh, a fae of this nature? Yeah, you can uh, give me a roll about it. Um,. What am I rolling on? Is it nature? Uh, yeah, roll nature to see if that's like an area that you've heard of. Is geography still a I have nature. John? If yours is not so good. I mean, I could do I think scouting I... lore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could also do nature, medicine, religion, society. I mean, I got everything. I got everything. Occultism. Um, I'm going to see if I've ever read any of this. In, okay. In nature, I'm going to do. Uh, I don't have geography lore. Okay. Come on, Brother Ramius. Natural one. Uh, t dirty 20. Shades of Lucky. Um, so maybe you... Jesus Christ. Maybe we'll you're call that, 
From now on, our natural ones are the lucky roll. The yeah, lucky, lucky roll. roll. <laughs> oh, brutal, but that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, maybe you're like, Brother Ramius, that book that you took from the quaking stacks, may I take a gander in your looking through it. I know you don't ha- know how to read, Brother Amius. <laughs> <laughs> Might I look at the book? I know. Um, and you find... Give me that, you illiterate monk. <laughs> <laughs> you illiterate monk. You find a passage. Uh, I mean, I, I imagine you have to study this for a while, um, but you do find a passage. It says, uh, in the fields along the western edge of the wildwood, uh, the wildwood, rather, the homesteaders say you can see the shadows of a forest that isn't there. They call it the Thin Lands. It's an eerie place, but the soil's rich, richer than it has any right to be. So folks stay, grow their crops, and huddle close to their hearths at night. That's all it says. This is it. This is in the River Kingdoms. Yeah, somewhere within, so on the edge of the wildwood. Where the we edge are of the wildwood, the forest within which you are in, and isn't which that what is we saw? see a forest in the distance. But didn't we see some aspect of the Thin Lands? Isn't that what happened to us? That like um, plane shift that we yeah. experienced? That shadow shift, the planar seepage, perhaps that was the thing. Yeah. That's so people go there, plant their crops, and then leave or they stay? They it's stay it's unclear. It makes it seem like there's an area somewhere along the western edge of the wildwood. Wild, I keep saying wild, wildwood, that is called the Thin Lands, but it's unclear if it's a terrestrial place or if it's another plane of existence. Mm, Seems sure. like the people who live there, the the sort of the soil is very fertile, so that's why. I they, think it sounds to me like it's a place where the line between the two worlds is is oh. thin, and that there is rich soil there, and so despite the obvious risk of being in a place where the fake can intrude, they're still living there and so that's uh that's interesting it is very interesting we should fascinating we should consult with lemmafield lemmafeld 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 thorn lemmafeld thorn we should yes we need to return and we will present her this book the uh journal of bolan mm-hmm. she can sort of as, as proof of i do everything. not i do not know of our duty to dr riddleson call us away from this place or if finding this sh- Going to this thin lands and finding Kinepo and recovering the shade with a key may be our next mission. We shall write him from Seven Arches. Well, we could just... Is he gone gone? No, he's meeting us back at the caravanserai, isn't he? No, he's gone gone. He's he, gone gone? He had another thing he was going to deal with, and he said, if you need to contact me, you know, send a letter. Right, um, okay. And then eventually you would reconvene back in Ustalav after your mission was done. So, yeah. Okay. okay, let's recover the plus one staff. Okay, um, and then let's. And then we. Zephyr has the... deadlift Lucky and is carrying her body. And we have uh, the mule cart too. Yeah, I feel oh, like yeah. Zephyr th- feels like she needs to do this. Oh. Yeah, but the mule cart to is work it out far away. The mule cart is like yeah. back while we're there. in this uh, where we left. It's like a mile and a half away. I feel yeah. like we don't want to just leave where her body Corimona. out on the bridge Corimona. while we're in tied the... up in the mule cart. Right, Corimona, who's presumably been eaten by wild animals. Yeah, I forgot about her. Forgot yeah, we all did. Mm. Uh, my, and my books are all back there, too. Uh, so I'm eager. And the horses. Oh, no, not your books. <laughs> <laughs> my books! <laughs> Joe, she's hurt right now. The way, hurt people hurt people. That's right. The way Joe, the way Joe said that. I'm going to try to not lash back out. was here. so cute. That he was like, you did say that guy. lucky joke when you rolled the one, so yeah. I think you're even now. You also said it's so sweet where we're like, there's a woman tied up in the mule cart. You're like, and my books. And my books. <laughs> and my books. <laughs> <laughs> Those books are more valuable than Lucky's life. Wow. Clearly, the books are still I alive. I thought you were going to stop yourself from lashing back. <laughs> I couldn't wow. help it. I cannot wait. <laughs> I'm Irish. I can't help it. All of the fights that are going to happen when, we're, when we cut. You're going to just fight everyone in this yeah, room. This is Keep the cameras rolling. Bath. Keep should, the cameras rolling. We'll do back-to-back episodes so you can see the bruises. Bonus content. <laughs> just uh, Sydney beating everybody up. <laughs> so as you're walking back, uh, you know, leaving the, uh, the Greenleaf Gnome fortress in the trees behind, uh, wondering if they will return from the Eternal Grove and retake it, um, let's talk about these level-ups. I've, uh, I've, I've mentioned to you uh, that you uh, would be leveling up at some point in this adventure. Uh, so uh, anybody want to uh, jump in and talk about what they're thinking? Uh, Sydney? Oh my God. Uh, kick it off? <laughs> oh, oh my God. You know what? We'll come back to come you. Come back to me. <laughs> 
We'll go with everybody else. I'll give you time to build a second level character. That's what I'm doing. Um, what about you, Talitha? I imagine Investigator has a, a cool, like the nice step up. A couple cool things. I get a, an Investigator feat, a class feat, uh, and I chose Shared Stratagem. Ooh. So uh, if I, when I devise a stratagem and I hit with, the, with that attack, uh, I can designate one ally and the creature I hit is then flat-footed to that ally. Oh, that's oh, cool. Huge. So like I can make a, make a creature flat-footed for Zephyr to hit or for Brother Rick. Or for Zephyr to hit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. Um, and then I get a, I got another spell, another formula, formula in my formula book. Okay. Um, and I don't want to tell you what I uh, took. Classic I, Matthew. Uh, and then I get a skill feat, which I, I will be honest, selecting skill feats at this level, I feel like you take battle medicine or not much else. <laughs> like there's, but I, but I didn't want to take battle medicine because I wanted. To, I, I, may, I may lemon law this, if that's all right. Are we doing lemon law for this yeah, sure. campaign? Yeah, um, sure. What I ended up taking was uh, trick magic item. Oh. So uh. It's basically like a, the, the equivalent of, it, like a, not really an equivalent, but the 2E's version of use magic device where you, you can try to activate a magic item by like trying to trick it into believing you're using magic, essentially. Huh. Yeah, um, might, might come into play. You roll, you roll Arcana. It's my, be, it's my best skill. It's my so I figured, eh, that might be fun. Hmm. Um, Zephyr? Um, level two, I get a class feat, skill feat. My class feat, I took Stunning Fist. So when I use my Flurry of Blows, which I can use with my fists or my bow, mm -hmm. um, when I hit with, um, if either strike hits and deals damage, then I can have the target try to succeed at a fortitude save throw. And if they fail, they get stunned. Oh, wow. So I get a chance to Great. stun with th all of that. And then for my skill feat, so to like maybe peek behind the curtain a bit, like I've had this planned for a couple episodes just in case we leveled up. And when we fell, when I fell in that combat, I wanted to jump and scream because the skill feat that I decided to take was Catfall. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> and I was like, I'm so close. I swear to God, if I die right now, <laughs> I'm about to take Catfall. Because I thought it would be fun. Like, there's not a lot of fun level one skill feats you can take. Yeah. And I thought because we're with Lucky, maybe like downtime, I learned a thing or two from her. Oh, and now it's just a sad thing no. that I took. Maybe you, you did, did though. Yeah. 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 Now it's a memorial feat. <laughs> <laughs> a memorial um, feat. Also, <laughs> it's like a memorial feat. It's like a it's bummer like a level, feat. A memorial catfall. Um, <laughs> also, fun fact: when I leveled up to level two, my hit points went from nineteen to thirty. Wow. Yeah. 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 Bad oh. ass. So it, I, I feel like is it a ten HP per level class monk? Um, I don't know. I just like the character sheet told me it does the math <laughs> for me. I, I don't know how the, what is the sausage con? is made. You con? know? Huh? What's your con? Oh, my con is plus one. Oh, yeah. Then it's a 10 HP bonus. That's great. Level, yeah. You know, one thing to keep in mind about Stunning Fist, the last line, this is an incapacitation effect. Um, so while it doesn't have the incapacitation trait, I think it works the same way in that, uh, you know, it's going to be harder to stun enemies that are much harder than you. But it's great that you can use your bow to enact uh, the stun ability because yep. you could take yeah. somebody out. That's How nice point. that would have been against Bolin. Um, Joe, what do you got? Um, Brother Ramius, and I can't believe that you died. I, just I know. can't believe it because uh, Brother Ramius, I think, was inspired by the his his lack of effectiveness at at uh, healing Lucky with treating her wounds, uh, his own sort of um, his own sort of mental. Uh, inadequacy. Inad well, the inadequacy <laughs> that came as a result of him being in his own own head with the you know the burning wounds and stuff like that, and thinking about what he went through, and he knows that he needs to push through that, and he also knows that he can't just rely on the keeper to do everything for him. Mm -hmm. So he is re he's doubling down and dedicating himself to the study of uh, of mundane medicine in order to. Uh, improve in that area. And so for uh, my second level feat, I eschewed cleric feats and instead did a medic dedication. Oh. So I'm taking a oh. medic dedication and that is going to allow him to, first of all, he becomes an expert in medicine. Yep. And then he is going to, uh, if he increases the treat wounds DC to 20, 
which I, I am think I'm going to try to do more often than not. Um, he gets an extra five points of healing automatically on top of the extra 10 that you normally get. So his wow. tree wounds can start to get really powerful as long as he succeeds at the die roll. This is tough. But um, dedications, do these work like multi classing? Does it work more like an archetype in 2e? Archetype. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, opening that up, that dedication up, I can take further medic feats <laughs> down the line that, that sort of they're kind of like doctor ish feats. Like you get better and better at being like a hands on healer kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, it works story wise. You think about the backstory we saw at the, in episode one of you just being unable to help people in an, an impossible situation, and now you're out here in combat and unable to yeah, save. We, so you must have like books that you've just have ignored in your that you're now like, let me look through these a little. Yeah, bit. yeah, and I think that he got maybe an interest in it because the way I imagined him, when we first saw him, he was in a garden, and I always imagined him having this. Uh, sort of hobby of herbalism and being kind of into growing plants and stuff like that. But then this tragedy strikes, and even in his uh, convalescence, which we haven't seen yet, I believe he became fascinated with those that were t caring for him and, and tending to his wounds. Mm -hmm. And it's something that he wanted to uh, help people with. But he's just level one. He's just not very good at it yet. Yeah. Uh, this level two feat is going to give him a big step in that direction. And then that'll synergize with this skill feat uh, that I took, which was continual recovery. And that will Amazing. allow him to nice. uh, do treat wounds every 10 minutes That's instead huge. of every hour to somebody. So we can and you Keep can only the show moving, and you can only take that because yeah. you're an expert in medicine, right? Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's really I the point. To dedicate of that. myself. What's Feed that? is like just to keep the show moving. Just to keep the show. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, exactly. Um, very cool. And any spells? Uh, another spell slot per day. Okay. Yeah, but uh, clerics have all access. You get to access their to whole spell list. But yeah. Another uh, slot is clutch. Yep. Um, skid. I got a another psionic. Uh, cantrip it's not a can no it's a feat sorry the psychic uh feat my class feat is i took psi burst hmm. which is i can it's a single action when my that has the psyche trait so i can only use it when my psyche is unleashed it's a fortitude save or reflex reflex save basic reflex save 1d4 damage hmm. uh against any target within 30 feet so it's like you know, my main axe is going to be my like my two action cantrips, like produce flame, frost, like whatever. But then I have that extra action left. I can just immediately do like one to four damage, like additionally. Oh, that's huge, especially if a guy's like right on the brink. Yeah, and you sense that. Yeah, and I can also I can do it has the mind shift trait also. So it ordinarily does bludgeoning damage. So it's just like battering somebody, like you know scanners or something. Right. <laughs> but it has the mind shift trait, so I can shift it so it can go against will DC and do straight mental damage. Oh, interesting. Which is which is really great. Awesome. I also I took a new I had a new spell, and I took charm. Ah, oh. and uh, <laughs> all right. My, so that's the kind of game you want to play. <laughs> <laughs> and my skill feat, I took performance. Oh, oh. So I think, and this is something that I think that he must has always had. He's always had this like performance ability, but we just haven't seen it yet because he's shy. Now that's this is represents like that. Okay, so he's taking some improv classes. Yeah, on the side, scrambling, yeah. <laughs> scrambling, entry level. <laughs> Uh, also, one more fun thing I forgot to mention on the medic dedication is when you do battle medicine to somebody, they uh, are immune to it for a day. You can only do it once per day to one character in, in combat. Mm. Uh, and with the medic dedication, you can, uh, if a target is temporarily immune to your battle medicine, you can once per day you can do it to someone who's immune to it. So it can kind of be a lifesaver. If you've already done battle medicine to somebody and they go down again, you can do it one more time per day, which is cool. That's cool. And then when you're a master of medicine, you can do it like two times per day or whatever. That so, is cool. Like yeah. one more time per day per character? No, or no. Per, okay. it, from from where I'm reading it, one more time per day overall. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the other big thing is I get, I became an expert in Arcana in the past. Oh, that's good too. I got I got, I got to level up to expert. That's great. Oh, that's cool. I get. I wonder if that's an investigator thing. I'm sure there's other classes, but that maybe rogues too. Like, where you get an expert at second level. Yeah. I think Did anybody so. else get an expert upgrade? Because I didn't for no. cleric. I no. only got it from taking the medic dedication. No, I'm. Yeah, we're not. I'm not a, like a, a skill based class at all. So yeah. 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 I thought about. It. I was. I could have. 
there are a lot of ways I could have gone on that because I could do it in, de- in deception or diplomacy. But yeah. It's like, ah, I feel like having, having an arc, uh, arcana makes sense for her. I had an entirely alternate build for second level, like ready to rock. Uh, that was very like in the story that I was trying to tell of Brother Ramius. And I just, I undid it all because of all this struggle that he's had helping his companions. And it, made, it just makes sense that he's mm-hmm. going to double down. I have to learn this if I'm going to uh, survive and, and advance. Be helpful, yeah. Uh, all right. So you get back to the area where you left Corimona tied up and she's still there. Uh, what do you? What is your plan with her? Are you just bringing her back? We'll bring her back as a prisoner. Bring her back as a prisoner. Okay. Do you say anything to her worth a damn? Bolada's dead. <laughs> no, we don't say that. Okay. It's uh, that's self evident because uh, we're carrying his body. You're carrying Bolada's body. She looks. She sees Bolada's body. She sees Lucky's body as well, strewn across the back of Zephyr. She doesn't say anything. Did we say we were gonna let the gnomes know if we got if they're if they're uh Yeah, they did this thing where like come find us, yeah. but we won't tell yeah. you where they uninvited yeah, they said, us. Come meet yeah. us at the, the Emerald Grove and then they uninvited us. We didn't give us any way for Eternal us Grove. To let they them would be know. weird about it. Eternal I feel Grove. like the gnomes they'll they'll know. They'll figure it out. They're gnomes. Let's leave it. Sure like, forget about it. You're not going to the Eternal <laughs> Grove. We'll leave a note on the entrance. It was like, hey guys, hope you enjoy the Eternal Grove, uh, the, the Emerald Grove. You know, enjoy the compound. You're welcome. Your, your fortress is back. There's nine bodies to dispose of. <laughs> right. we Rotting didn't. in the halls. We didn't clean up. Uh, all right, so you make your way back to Seven Arches, and I can I can very vividly picture this scene of you walking through the gates now, probably like a southern gate, with bodies, uh, and Oak Stewart tied up, the body of Bola. Are you displaying it, or are you kind of keeping it hushed? I feel like up? if we have a sheet, Maybe Break the be body a little discreet Bolan about too. it. Bring him Bolan. Yeah, we have to. We had to bring him back. All right. So in the in the cart, it would be uh, Buggles. Are you in there with two dead bodies? Oh. Yeah. You'd prefer two dead bodies to a horse? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Way, way. <laughs> I'm way more comfortable around death than a oh, horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brother Ramius is just silently, stone faced, driving the mule cart. Buggles yearbook quote. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Have a great summer. Class of t- class of twelve fifteen, I'm way more comfortable with <laughs> with death than with a horse. You come into town, people are watching you as you roll in, and we're just gonna flash from there to being back. Hold on, you got a picture tombstone. It's tombstone. Remember Tombstone? Never seen it. Say Tombstone. You never saw what? Tombstone? Tombstone. Yeah. Tombstone. Tombstone. Just the way you did said I say, it. Did like, I go all Philly? Tombstone. tombstone. Oh, shit. I saw Unforgiven. I didn't <laughs> see Tombstone. Uh, yeah, there's just a great scene in Tombstone where they're riding a cart with bodies on the back through town and just like, and people in town, you know, kill the people. And they're just, the people that are kind of responsible for it are there and they're just like trying to just not even look them in the eye because they're afraid they'll just start killing everybody. I mean, we're probably all sweaty and, it's and so like dirty. And it's so Covered sad. in blood. Yeah, like yeah. we probably look menacing. Some of us are dead and... <laughs> <laughs> Some of us are dead. Some of us aren't even alive. Aren't alive at all. But yeah, I think we're not making eye contact with anybody and just sort of like laser focused on getting to uh, uh, Emma. Lemma. Lemma. Yeah, and everyone's watching you. And I just like the idea of fading away from there. And now we're just back in uh, in the Oak Stewards. Um, John, what was it called? Do you remember? The room with the live the horse. The Wicker House. The Wicker House. The Wicker House. Yeah. Mm. And uh, Lemma's entering the room. You've already returned the bodies. You've already explained the basics. And uh, she just enters and... Uh, you guys look around and Lucky is not seated where she was the first time you had your meeting with Lemma. It's just an empty chair. Lemma's like, on behalf of the Oak Stewards, we thank you for returning Bolan to us. His life would have likely been forfeit anyway, though questioning him may have enlightened us further. I understand, though, that it was a, a dangerous mission and you had to do what you had to do. Corimona, for her part, will be tried. I do not know what her sentence will be. Unfortunately, there is still this matter of the missing key. 
uh, it's clear that uh, for all his antagonism, Bolan uh, was the junior partner in this plot to revive the Abnabulet curse. However, as long as the shade with a key lies in the hands of Bolan's fey master, there is no way to guarantee anyone's safety. Given your success in, in dealing with this rebel threat thus far, I've spoken to the Oak Stewards, and uh, we wanted to know if you would be interested in helping us to track down this uh, Kanipo figure and uh, finishing the job. Sorry, real quick. Did anything that we read give us any indication that Kanipo had anything directly to do with the gates opening? No. There's there was no, no indication. That no indication waiting. of that, but also no indication that he wasn't somehow involved. Right. Um, and he was supposedly responsible for the curse. Which has been around for centuries, millennium, perhaps. Long time. Our allegiance is to our Lord Dr. Middleson. So we must write him and ask his permission, but of course, I think I speak for all of us when the job is not yet finished. And perhaps we can be of service. No, I, I, I understand. Um, um, from what we know, um, it, it is not much. Uh, over the years, we, we have heard uh, rumors of uh, an eerie, slender figure roaming the Wildwood, um, but there are thousands of uh, folk tales roaming around the River Kingdoms, most of them the product of uh, over-imaginative bards or farmers afraid of the dark. Fayanara mentioned in her letter to me that you are uh, investigators by trade. Um, if you do uh, end up helping us to find this Kanipo, uh, I would suggest you start by doing some research. And uh, thanks to Bolan and the journal that you provided, uh, it seems that you have these th three pieces of information to go on. The name, Kanipo the Slim, um, some uh, connection uh, between Kanipo and the Gorgas. I don't know if you caught this uh, in your reading, but it, it, it seemed like Kanipo was perhaps responsible for these Gorga attacks. He has some sort of alliance or he controls them or perhaps even conjured them. Um, this is something we discovered uh, when looking further into it. Um, and then of course the name of Kanipo's ostensible domain, the, the Thin Lands. I would suggest um, following up on these leads uh, by combing through records in Seven Archer's quaking stacks. Uh, if you have the bark writ uh, that I gave you before, you will be able to gain full admittance. Um, I don't know if it will be helpful, but I can also point you in the direction of a, uh, a recent survivor of a Gorka attack, a farmer by the name of Pa Mosby. Uh, the Mosby farm is about 10 miles outside of town, uh, but he may be able to shine a, a new light on these creatures, which uh, it seems you have faced as well. Uh, most who have faced them have not lived to tell the tale. If there is some connection between Kanipo and the Gorgas, perhaps uh, Pa Mosby can help. Lastly, and uh, this may be a stretch, while the Thin Lands themselves, whatever they may be, mean really nothing to me or, or any of us, and as I have asked around, there is an area uh, along the edge of the Wildwood known as Thin Lands Farms. Um, Bolan writes that it's... Uh, it's called Thin Lands Farms. It's called Thin Lands Farms, but it's just a, a bunch of homesteaders. Um, we don't uh, go there that often. We don't really have dealings with them, uh, though their farmers have come into town to sell their wares from time to time. Um, it is mostly uncultivated land, sodden farms, small villages stretching along the edge of the forest all the way to the time and border. Uh, it, it is the only mention of the Thin Lands I've ever heard. Uh, so, mayhaps there is a connection. Thank you. Now, you said you need to wait for Dr. Riddleson's uh, approval, and I, 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 I appreciate and understand that. However, my colleagues and I believe that time is of the essence. Our elders have, have taken all this information that you've shared, and, and we believe we have three days and three nights, perhaps, to stop this before we risk serious ramifications. If what Bolan says is true and the shade with the key is somehow uh, connected to Kanipo's ability to bring back the Anubiyat curse, 
we need to act quickly. Where did you get this figure? Three days, three nights, where does it come from? This is what the elders have determined by uh, looking over Bolan's notes and then looking through the histories. You may discover uh, something else uh, in your time at the library, um, but it seems like Bo Bolan believed that this was to happen soon, especially now that Kanipo has the key. In fact, I believe the key has some original connection to the original curse, as if Kanipo once had access to the key, perhaps even created the key. It is unclear, but the key being in his, his hands is, is quite dangerous. And there's no reason to believe this attempt at a ritual ends with Bolan's favor. So if you are to help us, I would suggest you make haste and we will do everything we can to uh, relay your messages to Dr. Riddleson, wherever he may be. If what Bolan told you is true, the lives of all who dwell in this land depend on it. And frankly, if your investigation keeps you in and around seven arches, your lives depend on it as well. Not just the life of your companion here, pointing at Zephyr. Your secret is safe with me, my dear. But we are all elves now. Uh, Buggles, while this, is, this exposition is happening, comes up to brother Ramius and he's like, Tugging on his sleeve. Yes. Tell her. What's wrong? Tell her we need to take care of Lucky before we do anything. We need to cremate her. Yes. Um, <clears throat> sorry, where is uh, Lucky's body currently being held? We put it in a trash bag. <laughs> <laughs> Left trash it. bag. You didn't, you weren't clear. You wanted us to do something nice. I'm sorry, I did not know it. we needed to <laughs> explicitly say, don't put it in the trash. That's what we do with our pets. <laughs> Buggles, That's what you crying. do with your cats? You Buggles. put them in trash bags? <laughs> this is... Buggles, it's okay. I was just crying. Uh, it's not I like it was a horse. Why did Buggle the mean druid will be dead soon. <laughs> no, no, yeah. uh, yes, your friend. Uh, I am, uh, I'm we so must, of course, uh, yes. perform funerary rites and make sure this happens even before we uh, set out or, or do anything else. It is of utmost urgency that we show our respect for her sacrifice. It was her wish to be cremated. Cremated and, and brought back to her home, which I guess we can do at another time, but at least cremate her and we can bring her with us. I'm so sorry for your loss, Bolan's treachery has left an indelible mark upon so many lives. Um, we have a, a, a means of doing this. Um, uh, Fire would be the means. Right? Yes, we, we could go to the blacksmith um, and um, have her body placed within the ovens there and uh, they could collect the uh, ashes. Yeah, fuck it. What? what was that? Who's I it? think it's what Lucky would have wanted. <laughs> I don't. Into the black I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter. She was a warrior, perhaps having her body return to a place where steel was forged. I'll see you in Valhalla, brother. The appropriate. What is that? <laughs> um, or we could just um, burn her. The druids do not burn their dead. Um, however, we we will honor whatever wishes you have. We could just start a bonfire as well. Yes. It's up to you. Funeral pyre. Funeral pyre. Funeral pyre. Funeral pyre. Funeral pyre. Um, yes, we could do that. Um, is that something you'd want to do before anything? Yes. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, give me an hour and uh, we will uh, set this up uh, behind the wicker house. Okay. Um... I, I mean, think Jalitha will write Dr. Riddleson. I think if, if it's yeah, three once, days, so like, we're not going to get Once we're out of that, that conversation with her, Brother Amos is definitely going to go to Talitha and be like, we cannot afford to wait for Dr. Riddleson's response. No, we must write him and update him, but I agree. He, Time is of the essence. He trusted us to follow our own judgment, and in this case, I, there is a fear that I have this creature, whatever it is, having the key is, is a time bomb for all of our lives. So we must find it quickly. Um, and nothing else takes precedence, even our own desires to find answers to our own questions. Agreed. Buggles, Zephyr, 
Yeah, I, I, I agree. What once we get Lucky situated a container for her, I'll keep a hold of it, and then I'll go to the library with you guys. Yeah, we'll do some fun library time. It'll be so fun. I have been to the Quaking Stacks. It is a remarkable place, and uh, the proprietor is extremely friendly. Strange name, but very friendly. I am concerned, however, about our ability without Lucky's swords. Our ability to survive encounters the like of which we visited. We were visited upon us in the Wildwood. Maybe if we reach out, um, maybe Doctor Riddle will send, send someone send us else. Another investigator, yes. yes, I know, but the matter is urgent. We must continue looking for now. Ooh. Researching, at least, we could get started with. So I shall write Doctor Riddleson immediately, and then perhaps after the funeral, we go to the Quaking Stacks. I think I'd ask Doctor Riddleson too, like if we need to contact you, what do you do? And he was like, well. Make sure it's a secure message. We don't want any, anyone stealing the thunder of our discovery. Um, so just make sure you have a secure way of getting it to him. Yes, if we are indeed just writing a, a letter and sending it by Raven, I would hesitate to speak of the location of the real seven arches, uh, for example. So we have encountered problems. We'll speak in generalities, codes. And we'll speak about the loss of Lucky. Yes, that he must know of immediately. All right, so I'll write, the, I'll write the letter and we'll send a raven, but I'll, I won't give him anything. I won't give him any proprietary or confidential information, right. just letting him know like he died on a mission. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, yeah, a shorthand. <laughs> I'm reading Dracula right now, and it's, it's like they're kind of everything. A lot of letters. Shorthand and code. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so yeah, just pff, you let the bird fly, and uh, we follow it for a while. And then we come down to outside behind the wicker house where... All of you have gathered, and there's like a, uh, you know, Anakin Skywalker type uh, pyre set with Lucky's body on it, dressed in her armor. All of your healing potions lying with her as she <laughs> Surrounded wanted. As she would have wanted. Throw them in the garbage bag with her body. <laughs> Just laying about all See, wasted. Did you have any cool stuff? And any leftover gold you had, it is custom for uh, cat folk to be buried with their friend's gold. Yeah. Burned to alive with their friend's gold. <laughs> Keep my weapons. And uh, Lemma is there with a couple other oak stewards and they have torches. And they, they hand a, a torch to you, Zephyr. And uh, a torch to you, um, Talitha. And another torch to you, Buggles. Buggles like has his head there's his hood drawn, his head down. He just like shakes his hand, head when they try to hand him the torch. And um, say, uh, uh, Brother Ramius, would you like to um, <laughs> say anything? And he like sort waves of, the like, fire shrinks and back from the. <laughs> do you want to do you want to hold one of these? Why are you doing that? What are you Frankenstein? Like, <laughs> why a pack of wolves? <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> would you? Uh, are you? Would you? Did you want to say anything? Uh, yes, I, I will, but please, I, I don't need that. Okay, I'll do it. He, um, he looks across, he'll walk up to the pyre, uh, to the body laying across, and, um, we'll just turn back around and. We are here to honor Lucky's sacrifice. We didn't know her long, in fact. Lucky is um, a friendly name, not her true name. Let us honor Daro Dolasa for her, for, will, be, for being willing in this dangerous time to ask the questions that some do not want asked, to pursue the leads that lead to such danger. She went with all haste and with no fear. Often in the short time that I knew her, I knew her to be fearless and it saved our lives in only a short amount of time. We owe everything we have to her and it was her wish to be burned. And even as he says the word, it just like sends shocks through his body. We are not all of us, but most of us, and he's eyeing each of you from different places, different lands, with different customs, 
but yet we are all mocked. And he'll sort of just like put a hand on Lucky's stomach as it's up there. Darrow carried this, Darrow carried the same mock. It binds us together. And as Darrow burns today, let us remember we are eternally bound to this objective. And then um, he'll step back and just look away. Talitha and Zephyr approach the pyre. Zephyr's like, white knuckle gripping it maybe a lip quivering and like maybe you can somehow like visually see her taking her emotions and just like stuffing them down so that she can reach out and light with Talitha Talitha just totally steel faced and Buggles comes up he produces his own flame with the two of them and lights the pyre alongside them and as we stand watching it burn, Buggles is like, he starts singing a kind of traditional kind of funeral dirge from his part of the world. And it's almost like it starts like a drone, like, yeah, 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 yeah. and it turns into a kind of a hymn. Um, and he starts singing it like through the tears as the, as the flames grow higher and higher. And we hear Buggles funeral hymn continue as we uh, get sort of an above view of the pyre lighting up and we see once again Lucky in the gateway standing looking resplendent in her armor and weaponry as the village burns behind her that was what she saw when she stepped through then it cuts back again to the body, burning, as Buggles him continues. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year! <laughs> <laughs>